So folks, we've arrived in La Línea. You can't actually get the bus to Gibraltar because there is a border crossing to make. But the bus takes about two and a half hours. So it's a bit of a basic bus station. Not very much, not very much here. <laughs> Let's have a look around, quite basic. Yes, folks, that's a little part of the UK and the south of Spain. Has been for about 300 years or more. It's an important point because it is actually on the Strait of Gibraltar, which is a shipping canal. So whenever the Suez Canal was opened up, it was an important um, point for the, the British ships going to the rest of the British Empire. It's quite a lot of tourism going here, a lot of tourists going to the, the rock for the day. And I did bring some pounds actually because the currency is the Great British Pound. Just like ourselves, it's a little bastion of unionism, of Britishness, in a sea of hostility. I'm not sure if I can use my camera and the passport control here, so I better put it away, but we'll resume up on the next side of the passport control. As long as you have a passport from a country that's legally entered, allowed to enter the UK, um, you are permitted to enter Gibraltar without a visa. So. So that's us in folks, that's us into the Gibraltar, the rock. Lots of tours and stuff, but I'm going to do it myself. There's a good old British phone box. Give a call home. E.T. Phone Home. Gibraltar, it's him with Balamina. Fair help, it's a big shop centre in Balamina Heights. So I'm just walking up Winston Churchill Avenue here. There's lots of tours you can do, but do you know what? I've got the whole day here. I'm just gonna peruse it on my own enjoyment. There's a, a plane about to cross here. Can I still go? Better get across here. So this here is actually a level crossing on a runway. That, and that sound indicates the planes are about to come across. So I hope I don't get run over here. See, the police are actually dressed like London police. They've got the big sort of, um, I don't know what it's called, the big hat, the big cone hat. All the signs are in English. cocks about there. So this here is the land port, originally the only way into Gibraltar other than by sea. Land port was rebuilt in 1727 after being the scene of bitter fighting in 13 sieges. It's bigger than I thought. Because we came here, that's the border, you cross over the, the runway. Yeah, the gambling is big here because a lot of the the phone betting companies are actually based out of out of Gibraltar. So we're standing here, one of the oldest parts of Gibraltar, folks. It's a large galley house known as La Atazanana, at the English word for arsenal, where you keep your guns. Apparently it comes from this here, La Atarazana. So as you probably know, all of British post boxes will come with the, the crown, and that's the monarch who is in charge at the time. I'm not quite sure who that is, actually. It's, I need to do my research on that one, folks. Does anybody know what monarch that is? So just gonna take a walk down the main street here. Cardland. I was expecting a little small place, but it really is quite big. Looks quite... I wonder if they got Buckfast. <laughs> I'll check it out later on. A souvenir stand. Get your Union Jacks here. Let's go for a cup of tea. Hello. Hello, how are you? Good, good. Um, have you got any tea? Yes, we do. Have you got Earl Grey?
Marks and Sparks. So I was just talking to a guy that was telling me a bit about the situation here in Gibraltar regarding Brexit. At the minute, British citizens can live here because it is a British, British territory. But to go to Spain mainland, you have to stamp your passport every time you enter and exit. So if you go over the border to Spain, you must have a stamp. So after about six months, if you're crossing every few days, <laughs> the pages run out. It's a bit of a bureaucratic nightmare. But there is talk about one of the outcomes of the Gibraltar Protocol is that the citizens here will be able to get um, the Schengen, Schengen citizenship, which means they can pass in and out of Gibraltar, the mainland Spain, without a without problem. But it's just not as talked about in the media. Obviously, we hear a lot about the Northern Ireland Protocol because we're a much bigger part of the problem, if you know what I mean. Um, Gibraltar is a smaller city. So the Northern Ireland Protocol has featured a lot more in talks with the British government. But still, it is an issue here. So folks, just I'm getting my souvenirs here. British in 1704. The Rock of Gibraltar. All your memorabilia here. Are you British monkey there? Me, I get it for you. This one here. Okay. Even the lights are the same as Britain. Traffic lights. The road furniture. It's all exactly the same folks. There's Nelson. It's quite cold in the morning, but once it gets to about, I don't know, midday, we are almost, we're in the Mediterranean, folks. We're almost in Africa. I can see Africa from here. So folks, I just got my hair cut there. What do you think? Is that a lot better? More presentable? Let's take a look. I'm quite hungry actually. Let's go get some fish and chips. I was looking at some restaurants earlier, advertising best fish and chips. British fish and chips, but they haven't been to Northern Ireland yet, I don't think, so they haven't tried the fish and chips over there. As always, if you like the videos, hit that subscribe button down below. There's a flag shop, it's their flags. This is a Broadway flag, it's a little castle. Any Ulster flags? No. Cheap booze and fags, could they have run? So, I've spotted Roy's fish and chips here, let's see what his offering's like here. It's on the menu. Fish and chips, cod and chips. Roy, it smells good. I can smell the vinegar already. It's all vinegar. Hello. Hello. Yes. Uh, can I have fish and chips, please? Yes, any drinks? Um, beer, Sprite, water. Coca Cola, please. Is it going to be good fish and chips now? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, folks, the moment of truth has arrived. I've seen the sign saying the best fish and chips. So far, it looks pretty good. <laughs> Cod, it's my favourite. Buttered fish. It's not fish and chips without salt and vinegar. And a bit of red sauce, I see some red sauce. It's just breaking apart there as I the fork in. Mm. 
so far so good. Got some ketchup. Yeah. They got some mushy peas as well. Do you have mushy peas as well? Yes. Yeah. It's not proper fish and chips without mushy peas and ketchup. And a bit of tartar sauce. Just like a back and stuff, huh? There we go, folks. Mushy peas as well. Can't beat it. <clears throat> Was that tartar? Yeah, it is. There we go. What do you think so far, folks? So far, I've had fish and chips in all corners of the world, from my native Northern Ireland to Australia, New Zealand, even in Mexico, got fish and chips, Thailand. But this, this is another good offering. It really is a British tradition, folks. Mm. So the official currency is TBP, so things will come out with TBP, but you can pay in euros as well. Uh, TBP is good for me, folks. Best way to get here, from what I've researched, is to come to Malaga. There's flights from Dublin or Belfast. That's probably the cheapest way. And then you get a bus across. So I come into Malaga. It's a three hour bus from Malaga to here. And you just go across the border. You get dropped off at La Linea. I don't know if there are direct flights to Gibraltar, but spend a day or two in Malaga as well. We'll just come here for one day, like I did. <laughs> Stay for a few days for sure. Just keep going up and you will find lots of signs. <clears throat> I turned left at Marks and Spencer's on the main street. Make sure you bring some water actually. It's a long way up folks. Make sure you're in good fit shape. As always you come on the journey with me. I go places so you don't have to. Definitely not wheelchair accessible that's for sure. Look at that view, folks. Over in the Gibraltar port. That's me and Lance Spain in the background. Over there. Upper rock. Let's see this goes. Can I just wing in it here, folks? As if you didn't really know that. We're almost at Moorish Castle. So it is £16 for an adult child. 10 noob. Hello. Hey, is it um, £16 is it for the whole rock is it? So folks, so your ticket off is here, get your wristband, that gets you into all those activities. So that's the airport you come in, there's a road crossing the airport, it's pretty crazy. So that's literally the edge of Gibraltar over there, that line. La Linea, not to Spain proper over there. So let's folks, let's go inside the Moorish Castle first exhibit. Look at that view, you're looking out over Spain. This is with the 10 sieges. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay. All right. Hello, hello. Sorry, mate. That's no, okay. <laughs> now, folks, I am scared of heights, so this might be a bit much. So this folks is a toilet. This is where you would do your stuff. Do your ones and twos in here. So this is the way up. You go up this sort of hill from the main street and wind your way up along the roads.
So folks, I hope you're enjoying my little <coughs> British Empire tour here. I am from East Belfast, which is Newton Ards Road, the self-proclaimed heart of the British Empire, so we like to think anyway. But I'm just visiting other parts of that empire. We of course built the Titanic in our city and working class loyalist areas do have still a strong attachment to the British Empire. Which is why I'm fascinated with it. So I'm taking you on the journey. We're here and of course another important part of the British Empire, still is part of the British Empire, the, the city of Gibraltar. Gibraltar was important because it's a key um, key in the Strait of Gibraltar for the shipping for the British Empire, going between the British Empire and and Britain, essentially. Now, so it's more of a kind of a tax haven. There's a lot of gambling companies based here. There's a lot of businesses based here with a lower tax rate and that sort of thing. Maybe Northern Ireland should take note. I have said on a couple of occasions that we could take advantage of our unique situation in the EU and potentially even become like a sort of tax or gambling haven but I just think Northern Ireland misses its potential in a lot of ways because I was talking to a gentleman earlier about the unique situation with, within Europe they're going to try and take it to their advantage here and actually have one foot in one foot out which is kind of what we are in Northern Ireland too we can have two passports if I have a British passport I can live here visa free if I have an Irish passport, I can live over there in Spain, visa free. So I'm basically already taking advantage of that. And you could too, folks. I got off my soapbox for now. So that was the Siege Museum. Wasn't much in it really. So these here are the siege tunnels. These were actually the first tunnels we built by the British Army anywhere in the world. There's over 33 different tunnels. Some are still in use today. What if you even see me? Why am I wearing sunglasses indoors? That's another question. Just down one of the end of one of the tunnels here, folks. But you can see where they're reclaiming more land because because Gibraltar is kind of, it's locked. The only way to make more land is to build into the sea, which is what we're doing here. A popular belief holds that as long as the Gibraltar Barbary macaques exist on Gibraltar, the territory will remain under British rule. In 1942, during World War II, after the population dwindled to just seven monkeys, UK Prime Minister Winston Churchill ordered their numbers to be replenished immediately from forest fragments in both Morocco and Algeria because of this traditional belief.
might drop. Let's go and check it out. Thought it'd be worse. Okay, there's nothing, folks. Ah! Ah! I'm scared. <laughs> Shit. Oh dear. Fucking hell. Right. Let's get across. Let's go, come on. You can do this. You can do this. Ah! Don't look down. Oh shit. I'm scared of heights, folks, too, so that was a bit. Devil's Gap battery. Ooh, one last time, folks. Take it in because I'm going down. Wonder how much a home in the marina costs. Well, folks, that's almost it for today's visit. Quick visit in and out, last bus, first bus in, last bus out. Which could have stayed longer, but time is of the essence. I've got to get around more places. I think I checked out most of the main things. I'm gonna make my way back down the main street. Might have time for a wee pint before I get back on that bus, but we'll see. Well, folks, I almost forgot to do beer o'clock, so there's not much of a rush. I'm cutting the time to get the last bus back, but I managed to call for a wee pint of Guinness, as I always do, before I go on to the bus. So, back to the bus. I mean, Lord Nelson's here. Zoe Pub just has come into the city. Good, if not bad. Alright, salut, cilantro. The Strobia, the Khan, Post. I can't remember anymore, so anyway, get it in there, folks. Cheers.